All right, section 4.2 has to do with transformations on a coordinate plane. If you think of transformations as like uh, the old-fashioned transformers that change from, from figures to cars, transformations are like changes that take place. So changes on a coordinate plane. There's four different types of transformations that we're going to talk about. Um, the first one, it looks like it didn't take the whole thing, but it is reflections. The R got deleted off there. So reflection is like if you look in the mirror and what's reflected back is yourself. Um, so the types of transformation, the first one is a reflection. So the original is this gray and it flips over this line and it's reflected over the line. The second one is a translation, which sometimes is called a slide, and you literally like cut this out, the original, and you just slide it. You don't rotate it, you don't make it bigger, you just slide it up, down, right, left, diagonal. A dilation, you actually, um, if you think of you getting your eyes dilated at a doctor's, where they make the pupils larger, a dilation can make something larger or it can make something smaller. So this is dilated to the red. It's enlarged. Um, a rotation, let's see, that's not, that's not focusing in real well. There we go. Um, a rotation is like if I cut it out and I turn it or rotate it, that is another type of transformation. So those are four types of transformations, reflection, translation, dilation, rotation. Sometimes this is called a flip, this is called a slide, this is still called a dilation, and this is called a turn, uh, depending on the book that you have. Um, we turn around and we put these things on a coordinate plane. So we can reflect, this is all talking about reflections, we can reflect something over the x-axis. When we reflect it over the x-axis, what we literally do is change the y value to the opposite of what we have. So let's say I've got this triangle. Um, this is the point zero 04. And let's say this is 2, 1. And let's say 5, 2. If I wanted to reflect this over the x-axis, what I would have to do is I would have to change the y value on each one of these. So this would change to a 0, negative 4, because I take the opposite of the y. This one would change to a 2, negative 1, and this one would change to a 5, negative 3. Now if this is a, b, and c, this is what we've become a prime, b prime, and C prime, which just means the point after it's reflected. So I would go ahead and graph these. So 0, 4, I now look at as 0, negative 4. B, which is 2, 1, I now look at as 2, negative 1. C, which was 5, 2, I now look at as 5, negative 2. So, that triangle right there, the blue triangle, is a reflection of the pencil triangle over the x-axis. And again, what I did to do that is I just took the opposite value of my y. The only thing that changed from one to the other was the y. <coughs> if I take my same original graph, with the original points. 
and put them over here. And now I want to reflect it over the y-axis. Now what changes to do that is you take the opposite of the x. So I have 0, 4. I have 2, 1. And I have 5, 2. Okay, so remember that's my original graph. But if I want to reflect it over the y-axis, what I do is I take the opposite of my x. Now, there is no opposite of a 0, so that stays at 0, 4. But on b, it becomes negative 2, 1. And on c, it becomes negative 5, 2. So then I turn around and graph these. 0, 4 stays right there. Negative 2, 1 is right here. And negative 5, 2 is right there. So this is the reflection over the y-axis. So that's a reflection on a coordinate plane over the x-axis and over the y-axis. Now a translation on a coordinate plane is basically you're moving it right or left. So you add values to the x, or you move it up and down and add values to the y. So let's say I take this original uh, points here. Let's say I've got, I'll do it in pencil here. So a is negative 2, 3. And b is negative 5, 4. And c is going to be 0, all right, so there's my original triangle. And I want to translate this triangle two units right and three units down. So that means what I'm going to do to go to the right, I add a positive. So I'm going to add two to my x values. So that's going to give, when I take negative 2 plus 2, I'm going to get a 0. Negative 3 plus 2 is going to give me a negative, or negative 5 plus 2 is going to give me a negative 3. And 0 plus 2 is going to give me a 2. So that took care of my x, or moving it right or left. But now I have to go 3 units down. So down would be like adding a negative to it. So I'm going to add negative 3 to my y. So this is 0, 0. This would be negative 3, 1, because when I add negative 3 to the 4, I get 1. When I add negative 3 to the 5, I get 2. So I would graph this 0, 0, negative 3, 1, and 2, 2. So what happens is this thing translates or slides two to the right and three down. Dilation, you are going to multiply both the x and the y by the factor you're dilating it by. So on this one, they want me to dilate the triangle a, b, and c by a factor of two. So I'm going to multiply 2 times everything I have. So let me put the original on there. Again, I have 2, 1. I have 0, negative 2. So this is A. This is B. So 0, negative 2. And negative 2, negative 2. So this is C. Now, to dilate it by a factor of 2 means I'm going to multiply everything by 2. So that's going to give me 4, 2, 0, negative 4, and negative 4, negative 4. So 4, 2 is A prime. 0, negative 4 is B prime. And negative 4 negative 4 is C prime. So, 
this, the blue triangle, is twice as big as what the pencil triangle is. Rotation on a coordinate plane. To move or rotate an object 90 degrees counterclockwise, you're going to switch the X and Y, and you're going to take the opposite of both. To rotate something 180 degrees, and I don't know why the degree mark is on at the bottom, take the opposite of both the X and the Y. Okay, but don't switch them. So this says I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees counterclockwise. So let me first put these points on here. I have negative 2, 3, which is A. I have negative 5, 4, which is B. And I have 0, 5, which is C. So remember to rotate it 90 degrees counterclockwise. I switch the X and Y and take the opposite of both. So A prime becomes, I switch them, so 3, negative 2, and then I take the opposite of both, so I have negative 3, positive 2. I switch these, so I have 4, negative 5, which becomes negative 4, positive 5. And I switch these, so that becomes 5, 0, or negative 5, and there is no such thing as a negative 0. So when you put these on here, you have a negative 3, positive 2, which is my A prime. I have a negative 4, positive 5, which is my B prime. And then I have a negative 5, 0, which is my C prime. So literally this thing just turns. Okay, your homework on this is page 221, 12 through 24 even.